I don't necessarily think this topic deserves its own article because I have written about Edward Gaming's dynamic and how delicate it is in roundups in the midseason review. So maybe if you've seen some of that, this will be a little redundant for you. But I just really want to underline a misconception that people are having that the reason why Edward Gaming is failing is on like a single player that they're missing or the fact that Coral won or Pawn are sick. If you look at the breakdowns of the way that Edward Gaming has been succeeding and losing in some of the games they've won, I don't think you can really narrow it down to a single player. You have Amazing J and Pawn as a duo who played six games together. They lost two of them, so that's a third. Um, Amazing J and Bainey who played eight games together and they lost three of eight, which isn't significantly more. Coral won and Bainey, four of nine. Again, similar numbers, and then Coral won and Pawn is one of three. So you've got... Maybe the pawn games are slightly smaller in terms of losses proportional to total games played, but pawn has also played fewer games, and there isn't really a statistically significant factor. The point is, is that almost every single duo has lost games, and I think the problem is, is what's happening is the synergy is struggling from a multiple rotations. The first important thing to discuss is why their synergy was so important and how it was set up. Pawn, very much a distractor kind of player. He relieves a lot of jungle pressure just by playing really crazy. He can go like 0-7 in lane and still have an impact because he's just doing dumb things. And Edward Gaming can then use Coral 1 and Clear Love to make up for some of those deficits in team fights because of the way that they play the team fights. The way that Coral 1 will go in and zone out priority damage dealers and Clear Love will knock, lock up the front line or assassins that try to get to death. These types, this interaction actually makes Edward Gaming's team fighting really strong because Deft is free to get a lot more hits off, um, do, do a lot more of deft things, right? So we've already talked about like these four key components that and how they work together. Clear Love can have free reign of his jungle. Uh, Korra 1 and, and Pawn had very, very low percentage of team gold stats. They actually had the lowest in their league last split just because Clear Love got so much gold. Pot Deft, relative to the average, also had a really low gold distribution stats, but he still uh, uh, received a lot more of the gold that his team got than pretty much anyone else because it, it was a very bottom lane centric team. Clear Love liked to camp Deft's lane provide a lot of pressure there so that Deft could play more confidently with Mako, and you saw more success in those lanes. So Korra 1 or Pawn might fall behind a little bit, but they were good at making up the difference in team fighting, and the way that Pawn fell behind actually made it so that Clear Love had a freer jungler. And of course, you always just have those games where Korra 1 and Pawn went off, and those were a bonus, of course. So that's a very important factor to consider when you're looking at Edward Gaming. Just the way these pieces play together, it's just something really, really special that they manage to almost fall into. If you start taking out these pieces, then you see a very different type of team. First of all, talking about the lane of Korra 1 and Bainey, that kind of interaction, when Korra 1 and Bainey play together, there's very low early game pressure in the lanes because Bainey will play more of that farm style, he'll look for the patient uh, creep picks, sometimes he falls behind and then makes up for it in team fights. I think he is overall a weaker version of you. I don't think that necessarily makes him a bad player. He doesn't really stand out in any particular way, but he's he's solid, like he's a good player. Um, and then Koro 1 doesn't get a lot of ganks. Uh, usually was famous for going even in lane and then coming out big in team fights. Sometimes again, he can have that kind of pressure, but he's not going to usually pull the jungler very often. That's the that's the big factor. So you have very low early pressure. And then because of that, it's very easy for teams to target clear love in these situations. They can go into his jungle, invade with the support, uh, get him out of the game. And clear love is really generally the backbone of the team. If clear love can have an impact in some way, then usually they win. Uh, whether it's through team fighting or ganking lanes, etc. But if you focus on getting clear love behind, which is something I think that teams have really started to realize is a good way to take down EDG this split. Now, Amazing J, when we talk about putting Amazing J and Pawn together, I think that you also lose some of this team fighting aspect that I talked about being very core with Koro and clear love, the way they interact. 
in some of these situations, you see clear love going in to get the lockdown, but then just ignoring the damage dealers, or no one goes in with him and he just gets blown up. Because usually you have like the Coral one clear love dive buddies, and the synergy wasn't quite there in team fights with Amazing J. Amazing J is much more of a duelist type player, and Amazing J. The really big thing about Amazing J is when you talk about having him in the same game as Deft, it's problematic because Deft has relied a lot on the jungle pressure from clear love as i stated before to really play more confidently in lane whereas amazing j on energy pacemaker he was by far their best laner right so he always got the ganks he always got the pressure and he could just tear off because people would give him the tools to succeed and he'd do much better uh when people talked about amazing j versus go going matchups Guess whose jungler was top all the time? Uh, energy pacemaker, Drizzle. That's why they had such a strong early game in some cases, just because getting Amazing J to go off was so big for them, and they would throw pretty consistently, which overall made them a terrible team. Because <laughs> they weren't based around team fighting, right? They were based on Amazing J effectively solo carrying with support from his jungle. Def if Amazing J and Deft are splitting Clear Love's attention, and then you also don't have a lot of uh, individual pressure the way that Korra won and Self-Sufficient the way, the way that Korra won and Pawn were able to provide that, you have Clear Love spread very, very thin as a resource. And we saw, as a result of that, the team just struggling across the board in those types of games. Now, Amazing J and Pawn, I already talked about the team fighting issue, um... Korra and Bane need the, the early pressure issue. I think Korra 1 and Pawn even had a hard time because when you swap out these pieces and you put them back in and you just expect them to play like they always did, they might need a little more time to improve their synergy. So in the set against Unlimited Potential, where first they played Amazing Jane and Pawn and it didn't work out very well, and then they put in Korra and everyone was just really scattered. Part of it, I think, was Pawn was playing a champion he wasn't really comfortable on. Also, the, the Echo... Koro 1 didn't have as much uh, as much success in that game in terms of team fighting, so you had Deft getting picked off a lot, Deft positioning aggressively, because he's usually able to position pretty aggressively within the context of EDG, both in lane and in team fights, because of the solid frontline capability that they have between Koro and Koro. So overall, you have teams used to a type of dynamic and a type of playstyle that's being swapped out for things that don't necessarily fit together. Enter Rei and Jun Zhao. This last weekend, we saw them play one set against Snake only with Rei, uh, Pawn, and Jun Zhao. And of course, Clue Live and Mako have been constant throughout this entire team. Rei and Jun Zhao come from the same team as Baimi, which is AD Gaming. And the way that team worked was actually very similar to Energy Pacemaker because they had Rei, who practically solo carried games. He was on Riven, uh, AD Jarvan a lot, sometimes Kale in the promotion where we saw him play Kale. He got a lot of the jungle pressure, a lot of the attention, but Jin Zhao, who was frankly not super stellar, didn't often get that. I'm not completely sold that this roster will work against everyone, because I think a lot of their advantages they gained from a snowballing a Draven and lane swap situations. But it's definitely, in terms of dynamic, works a lot more sense. Like, Clear Love can focus jungle pressure on one side of the map instead of being spread too thin. You still have the combination of people who are more lane dominant. My question is, is when they come to team fighting, how is that going to consistently work the way that it did? Do they ha still have that comeback potential? Or do they have to snowball with this roster? If they have to snowball with this roster, at least they have a win condition and a game plan. Anyway, I hope that this video kind of clarified where some of my opinions lie on this. Of course, there are other issues with Deft having trouble in the current meta with his champion pool. I think his only really extremely viable picks that he can play are Sivir, Quirky, and Ezreal. Some of his other picks, like uh, he hasn't shown a lot of success on Callista. Again, with the inconsistent positioning on attack damage carries things like this that he's shown in the past on some of these uh, Tristanas and Veins and Callistas, which have never just really been his style of champion. Clear Love, until recently, has had some tr trouble playing a disengage role on Gragas, I think. I think that's improving a little bit, but again, in these, this, this snowballed game where we saw him have the great Gragas performance, 
he used it more for engage and splitting out targets than necessarily disengage, which I think has been something that they have needed in the past and hasn't really worked for them against teams that get ahead early on them like King. These are the concerns I see with Edward Gaming, and these are the concerns I don't really see people focusing on. So just remember, guys, when you're looking to blame a specific player, it isn't necessarily one player who's performing poorly. It could be something not working across the board because team dynamic is a really delicate thing. 